Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Koneskin. Welcome back to my art studio. What I've got on the easel right now is a really nice winter scene with a bit of snow and some long grasses covered in frost. And the animal that I'm gonna be putting in this painting is going to be a red fox. So throughout the week while I'm working on this painting, I'm gonna show you a bit of the process of how I paint this red fox, some of the fur and just some of the textures and details that go in to painting this realistic red fox. So with that, I'm gonna get on over to the easel and start painting. To start, I'm just gonna rough in the fox with uh, some basic orange colors, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, some raw umber and some light gray just to dull it down a little bit. And this is just to get some color down so I can get a sense of, of the shape of the fox and where everything's gonna be. I'm not gonna be totally settled on this. This is just to kind of get rid of that blank space and, and to kind of block in a bit of a rough shape of the fox with some color and a little bit of that fur break. Then I'll start slowly refining the fox's face and I'm gonna do the fox's face first just to kind of experiment with some colors and to really get the personality of the fox done before the rest of the body. So again just blocking in with some of the basic colors just to get a shape and kind of start blocking in some of the darker spots and the shadows in the ears and a little bit of that shadow that's under the eye. Now, a lot of what I'm gonna be doing here is really just building up the base colors of the fox's fur. This is gonna be extremely important to, to build these base colors before I add the highlights. This is really gonna give the fur the texture I want and the variation in color that I want. And the brush I'm using here mostly is going to be a number two round brush. It's got a nice fine point. The, the brush I'm using here is mostly brand new, so the, the point on it is really nice and fine. So I use this throughout most of the detail work on the fox's face. So just building up those shadows and filling everything in. And then I'm just going to block in the white part that's on the side of the face and, and on the just below the nose and and below the chin. I'm not getting too detailed just yet. I'm still kind of roughing things in so that I can continue to slowly build it up and I'll add more detail as time goes on. So now onto the eyes. I, I feel like doing the eyes right now just because I think it'll give the fox that life and that personality um, early on so that I can kind of build around that. And it's important to kind of just very, very gently and very loosely build the shadows. I don't want to get too strong here. The, the fox's eyes have this kind of dark um, yellowish brown color. And I really want to pay attention to the direction of light and really get that, that strong light direction right here. So I'm just going very slowly and then I'll build up the rest of the shadows, just kind of finishing off the overall look of the eye. And then comes the all important highlight. And this is just almost like a wash of like a bluish gray color that I'm putting on extremely thin, just so it has a very transparent and translucent look. And then with the final bright white, and I think that's good for the eyes. Now I'm just gonna continue blocking in the rest of the, the fox's face. And I kind of changed the, the orange color here. I, I felt like it should be a bit deeper and a bit stronger. So I've kind of mixed a bit of a stronger orange, just relying a bit more heavy on those, on those cadmium reds and cadmium yellows. And then again, still building up the shadows and building up those base colors. This is really gonna work well when I start adding the highlights, as I said before, because once all that base color is down, adding the highlights only just brings the rest of the fur to life.
I do jump around quite a bit just to work on different pieces at different times. There's a lot going on with this fox and there's a lot of detail and a lot of different elements and a lot of different fur textures to take care of. So I'll just kind of jump around and work on different pieces at different times as I feel that they need to be filled in. And now I'm starting to get into a bit of the darker shadows with that more rusty brown color. And just really paying attention to the breaks in the fur and the direction of the fur and the texture of the fur so that it can look as real as possible. And now I'm just adding a bit of a gray color to this base coat of the fur just to kind of break up some of that color. I noticed that the fox's fur is, a, is quite mottled so I, I want to add that gray in there just to kind of give it that sort of mottled color look. I don't want it to be one just even color of, of red and orange. And now just onto the ears and slowly building up those colors as well. There's a bit of these reds in the ears, but not as much. So I try and gray them down quite a bit, but also try and keep the colors matching as well. And now for these really fine hairs that are on the ear. And I'll work on the highlights and build those up a bit later, but right now I just want to get a bit more of that base color in. And then I'm just using that same gray that I was just using in the ears to kind of add a little bit more gray color to the base coat of the fox. Now for the important highlights, and here I'm just going to take a bit more time and just be a bit more precise with my placement and use these highlights both to emphasize those shapes and to emphasize the direction of light. So I'll just slowly build it up and I, I don't want to overdo it here. It can start to look really great once I start putting the highlights on, but I, I just want to make sure that I'm still paying really close attention to where I'm putting the highlights so I don't overdo it and I lose all that color underneath that I just spent all that time doing. So now just the top highlights on the top of the fox's head and just a few on the nose. Just kind of very quickly emphasizing some of those very highlighted parts. And I'm going to use almost the same color to do the highlights of the brightest parts of the fur in the ears. And it'll, it'll because of that gray undercoat, it'll have a bit more of a gray look than the yellow that I was just using. Now onto the white parts that are around the fox's nose and under the chin and just going down the front of the neck. And I'll deepen some of these shadows that are around the mouth and just along the lines where the whiskers are. I just want to be careful with how dark I make this white fur that's on the fox's neck. I want it to look like white fur that's in shadow and not just gray fur. And I think that's going to come about by just being very delicate with the lights and the darks of this white fur. And then I'm just going to come in and just very lightly touch in the parts of the highlights and sort of the same way that I did the fox's face. I, I don't want to overdo it 
and I just want to really emphasize some of those shapes. Now for the all important whiskers. Here I'm using my round zero and this brush was brand new at the time so it has a very very fine point which is perfect for painting these really really fine lines of the whiskers and I think this just kind of adds that final touch to the fox's face um, just for that last little piece. Okay, now on to the fox's body, and now that I have my colors sorted out, I'm going to follow the same style and way of doing it that I did the fox's face, where I'm just going to block it in. The only difference here is that this particular fox is going to have that variation that's, that quite a few red foxes have, where um, starting kind of about the mid-back, they get a little bit more yellow in color, and they kind of lose a little bit of that red, and it becomes a little bit more mottled with dark patches and light patches, so I'm going to try and do that with this fox here. And now I'm just filling in some of these darker shadows, trying to really build the structure of the fur and just doing some basic blocking in, trying to pay attention to both texture and direction of the fur. and I'm gonna alternate back and forth between light and dark, really trying to soften these edges. Uh, when foxes have their winter fur coats, they the fur is really soft and really light and it kind of blows in the wind and so I want that very light, airy feel to it. So I don't wanna get too dark with some of the contrast here. I wanna maintain a light sort of airy look to the fur. here just working on some of the fur breaks paying attention to the way the fur is breaking and, and the direction in which we're looking at it and again this is all just about building up those base colors to really give myself a nice solid foundation before I add highlights and in the same way here I'm adding some gray color just to kind of break up that orange and red just to give it that little bit of texture and a little bit of variation. And now onto the highlights. And I'm just being a little bit more cautious and a little bit more careful so that I make sure I'm placing the fur in just the right place and at the same time not overdoing it. I really want it to look natural and light. And so I'm just going to go in and slowly add these highlights and build them up. And this, this isn't even the brightest highlight. This is sort of my mid-range highlight to just emphasize those, those areas of fur just a little bit. And then I'm going to go in and add an even brighter highlight after this. Okay, just a few finishing touches with that mid-range highlight and now I'm going to go in and start adding the brightest highlight to really emphasize some of that um, fur texture and shape and especially here on the top edge of the fox where the light is coming from just to really give it that good strong sense of, of the direction of light.
and I'm only just adding the smallest amount of highlights to this break in the fur here. I only want to emphasize it just lightly, just so I don't lose all that dark shadow color that I, that I put in there before. And then I'm just going to do just the edges of some of these other breaks here. And just very lightly emphasize these other parts, just trying to be very subtle about, about these highlights. And then I'll just really emphasize that, that top highlight by just adding an even brighter color to that. And I'm going to go back and add a bit of an orange color and a few darker orange colors because I feel like I lost a little bit of that vibrancy when I added the highlights. So I'm just going to go back very lightly and add some of those orange colors back in. So now onto the part of the fox's body that's going to be that more gray, yellowish color and not as much of that red color. And so you can see the colors that I'm adding now are a lot more gray and they have a, a bit more of a yellow tint rather than an orange tint. And this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge than the front half because there's going to be a lot of dark and light patches within this and quite a bit more fur breaks as we get closer towards the tail. So I'm going to slowly start adding those darker colors while at the same time trying to create a nice gradient from that orange at the front of the fox to this little bit more yellow darker colors uh, at the back. So here again I'm just adding in those dark shadow colors just to kind of follow um, the direction of the fur and paint some of those darker shadow colors that where the fur breaks and you see a lot of that dark space underneath. So now I'm adding darker colors for those breaks and I'm trying to be as subtle as possible about this but a lot of this may get painted over as I get further along but here I just want to give myself an idea of where these breaks in the fur are. It's really important for me to pay attention to the direction of the fur and the texture of the fur as it crosses over in different parts of the body where you might have fur that's a bit longer or it or it's laying a bit flatter or the fur that's that's standing up or the direction that you're looking at it. So I'm really trying to pay attention to those textures and those colors as I as I build up these highlights and 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 slowly fill in all these colors. Now just adding some of those longer furs that go down the back leg. And now I want to start adding some of the brightest highlights here except it's going to be a little bit more about emphasizing some of these fur breaks and then I'll add a really strong highlight on the top of the back just to emphasize the direction of light. So I just want to follow a lot of the work that I've already done to build up these base colors just to emphasize that the ends of some of this fur has a brighter color to it than the base.
And as I start to add these highlights, it really starts to come alive and look a little bit more like that fur texture that I was hoping for, that yellow color with the dark base underneath. And I'll also use this to kind of help build that gradient between the orange at the front of the fox and this sort of duller yellow color at the back. And now I'm just going to add some brighter highlights here just to emphasize some of the brightest ends of the fox's fur and to kind of help emphasize those, those patches where it goes from light to dark. But I'm being very careful about this and I, I really don't want to overdo it. I want to be as subtle as possible just so that the fur has that nice soft texture to it. And now for just the highlight on the top of the back. And I just want to go in and just very lightly add a few highlights and a few bright spots here and there just to emphasize a few different spots and just kind of add the final touch to it. And then I'll go back again like I did before and just add a bit more of that deeper orange color just to kind of help with that that gradient and to also bring back a little bit more vibrancy back into the fur and this is just very very light over top of some of the fur. So now onto the legs and the fur on the legs down towards the bottom of the feet is mostly black but I'm going to try and tint some of that with the same kind of orange colors just to sort of tie in um, all the colors of the fox and then it'll just be about building that gradient from the lighter orange fur down into the darker black fur um, of the legs. I'm also not going to be as detailed as I was on the fox's body because the hairs on the fox's legs are short and they just have a little bit more of a, a fuzzy kind of texture to them and so I'm really just going to focus on uh, a bit more shape and shadow and just making sure that the color is nice and rich uh, on, on the fox's legs. As I said, I'm going to be mixing a lot more purples and mixing red into black and when I get down to the darkest parts uh, of the legs it's going to be mostly black tinted with a little bit of red um, just to kind of create a bit of a purple color for some of the darkest colors of the fox's legs. And here I'm just trying to get the shape of the feet to look right. I'm being very loose, just trying to get the structure um, to look right. And because this is sort of going to be a little bit more in shadow, um, I, I just want to pay attention to um, the direction of light again, only it's going to be a lot more about um, the shadow and these dark colors that are on the fox's legs. So just building in a little bit of that fur structure. Sometimes the legs in parts where there's the gradient between the black fur and the orange fur, there's a little bit of like a mottled color. So I'm just going to try and build a lot of that into this by just adding tiny little bits of orange into the black parts of the fur and a little bit of black into the orange parts of the fur just to kind of cross it over as a way to make that gradient with the way the hairs are on the fox's legs. Now it's on to the all-important tail, and I'm going to do this in the same way. 
I'm just going to start by building up those darker shadow parts where there's going to be some fur breaks just to give myself an idea of the direction of fur, where the fur is falling, and the texture and the length of each section of the tail. And this part here, these are really just as a guide. I'm probably going to paint over quite a bit of this, but I really just want to get the the shape and the shape of the the breaks of the fur right before I start adding anything else. So once I've got that right, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start adding some of these mid-range values and just start building up those colors. The tail's going to be quite a bit darker than the rest of the fox and it's going to have quite a bit more of these darker purples and quite a bit more shadow, especially on the edges of the tail where it's going to be mostly black, kind of like the fox's legs, where it's just going to have the ends of the of the fur really dark on either side. So now I'm just filling in some of those other spots with that yellowish color that's similar to the color that was on the back of the fox. And here I'm just trying to get those fur clumps to look just right, to look natural, trying to make it look very subtle and very soft. And a little bit of the same just on the upper part of the fox's tail. And now I can take my round number two, which I've been using for most of the fox's fur, and I can start adding some of those finer details and finer highlights. And then I can come in and I can start deepening some of those shadows and deepening some of those breaks in the fur that I outlined in the first part. Then I'm just going to follow some of my outline that I had before, just being very soft and very subtle about this and trying to be careful about where I put some of these fur breaks so that I can keep it nice and natural and realistic looking. Now I can start adding some of these highlights and I can start emphasizing that direction of light and the direction of the fur. And you can see I'm not really adding that much. I'm just adding it in the direction of the fur and just to try and emphasize some of those darker parts that are underneath and just emphasize some of those fur breaks. Again, just not to overdo it, but to keep it nice and soft. I want this to feel just like that very soft, thick winter coat that foxes have. So I'm keeping the brushwork very subtle and very soft. And even my highlights that I'm putting on aren't super aggressive they're just sort of the next step up in value from the color that's underneath Again, just taking my time and just really paying attention to the direction of the fur and the texture. And now I can go in and start adding some of the darkest parts of the fur, emphasizing some of those fur breaks, and especially the fur that's on the edges of the fox's tail where it's the darkest.
And now I can come in with the brightest highlight. Just further emphasizing those fur breaks and the brightest spots and the brightest parts of the fur. And what's great about this is I don't need much. I just need to add it in just those few spots and then it really, really brings out that detail. And the other thing that really makes a lot of these highlights stand out is a lot of that base color that I put down before, those darker purples and some of that darker yellow. It really makes those highlights stand out when I'm painting this part of the tail. So I think the fox is mostly done now and I'm just going to go in and just add a little bit more of those orange colors and I just want to kind of clean up uh, a bit of the edges and a bit of the textures that, that I think need a tiny bit more attention just to kind of give the fox that overall good clean look and to tie in a lot of those orange colors by putting a bit more of a glaze over top of these different parts of the fox. So now I'm just going in with my round zero brush, very small, very fine point, just to add a few finer details to the fox's face, just to kind of emphasize some of those highlights where I think they need them, and to add a few fine fur details just to kind of finish off the, the whole look. And with that, I think I have the fox finished. And now I just want to show you the grasses that I'm going to be painting in front of the fox, which are going to help set the fox into the scene and push it back a little bit into the correct plane of the painting. So I just get my grasses painted in with that gray color. And then I start with the frost. Now this is sort of the base layer of the frost which is just mostly a gray color with a tiny bit of raw umber and alizarin crimson and I'm just trying to work quickly and just give it that fuzzy texture that frost kind of has. I'm leaving the middle part of the grass that gray color because when you look at something that has frost on it in, in nature you can really only see a lot of the frost that's just on the edges and not necessarily straight on of the shaft of the grass that you're looking at. So I'm just going to cover everything in that base color. And then I'm going to take straight titanium white and add that top highlight to just the top edge and maybe a few other parts of the, of the frost to give it that final bright frosty look. Again, trying to keep that nice fuzzy looking texture. And then I'll go back over some of the spots that I've already painted just to make sure that that bright white highlight is as bright as possible. And then once I've done these grasses, I think I have a finished painting. I'm really happy with the way this painting turned out and the way the fox looks. I hope you enjoyed getting a bit of insight into my process of how I painted this fox. Thank you so much for watching.